Imagine NL in a Hmong Cleasy. Our daughter is now, by the way, we're like making no progress, but that's okay. My daughter's at the age now where she's in like, I don't know, like six or seven activities a week. And every single activity, I do see like a different kid wearing a Monkler jacket. It's not the same kid every time. It's usually like mom is dripped out head to toe in like Celine driving a Range Rover. Kid is like head to toe, like a, a Monkler jacket, which is probably not the way it's pronounced because I'm sure it's like Swiss or something. And then like under the jacket, it's like Burberry head to toe. And I'm like, bro, get your kid the fuck out of the community center. <laughs> Can't you do like some private shit, bro? Your ass really taking like group art class at the community center? Man, fuck you. I got the H&M sweater, Costco socks. I am wearing doer pants though. New Balance shoes. Roots hat. <laughs> or a uh, baseball cap from Winners. I'm wearing a thrash tank top and Rick Owens. Jack Dorsey! Jack Dorsey in the, in the chat! Jack Dorsey, I have to ask you an uncomfortable question. Do you remember in 2021 when you tweeted that um, hyperinflation is coming and it's going to affect us all in ways we can't possibly uh, fathom? Well, it's three years later, brother, and uh, they're back at somewhere between two and three percent. Would you like to? Would you like to respond? How, librarian, how did you have that? How could you have possibly had that lined up? The speed with which you brought that is actually uh, troubling. Griffin from the Brussels Griffin from the French meaning Griffin. That's, I'm just going to say that I'm impressed. So that's a little spooky dookie with it. Can I ask you, this is a serious question. I, and you'll know it's a serious question when I ask it. But are you using um, Google? Because I thought Google was like too washed to get results like that in the modern era. Half and half? What's the other half? Is the other half Bing or... Either that or I just search straight on Twitter. Oh, okay. You just got to parse out the right keywords. Can I tell you something? Kate, are you in the chat? I don't want to I don't want to criticize you without you having an opportunity to defend yourself. I feel like I am maybe I'm old or maybe I'm right. Those are the only two options, okay? I if you were to say Hey, find a restaurant in this neighborhood. How would you find it? Would you go to Google and type restaurants in neighborhood? Or would you go to like Google Maps and zoom in enough until like the businesses started showing up and type restaurants? Maps? My ass is old. Okay, I'm, I'm old and I'm wrong. I feel like I'm such a text-driven Andy. Like, I'm, I'm still coming to terms with, like, apps. I would rather run everything from, like, the start menu or the run menu or, like, the command line or something like that. Like, what, watching my kid use YouTube, and it's because she's, like, still illiterate. I get it. But it kind of, like, drives me crazy because she's like, Daddy, I want to show you a video. And then she clicks on a video and then scrolls through the related videos until she sees, like, what she wants to see, right? It's like relational browsing. Like, rather than having, it, having a, a search term that she's looking for, she just starts, she goes to, like, the website and then just clicks on things that are contextually related until she gets to where she wants to go. And I'm very much like a, I'm a keyword driven Andrew, where I just type every piece of information about something that I'm looking for that I know, so that Google takes it all and synthesizes it and spits out like the exact result that I'm looking for. But I think that if you're a keyword Andrew, I think our time is kind of past. I think the relational browsing is actually like the way of the future and it kind of scares me. Voice and image search are going to take over soon. I saw, I don't know, it, it was the new Samsung ad maybe, or the new Google Pixel was like, it showed a dude 
and he would like saw a cool lamp that he liked and he was trying to type into search. He was like, cool red lamp with an accent on the top. And then it came up with a bunch of like fucked up results, which it, that's a Samsung ad. I was hoping it wasn't Google because I was like, hey, my brother in Christ, you know you made the search engine, right? So when it brings up a bunch of ads and like unrelated SEO stuffed chat GPT generated articles, you know that you were the one in the kitchen making the soup, right? So like, no wonder the search sucks. But anyway, sorry, I'm kind of, I got off on a tangent. But then it shows that like you use Google Lens and he like circles the image and then the, it searches for it and then he buys the lamp. Is this actually something that people want? I'm asking sincerely. I, I have become like Brad Pitt from the big short where I'm like, I feel like every step in technology is like, we invented something that's gonna make your life easier. And I'm like, does it make life easier or does it make it easier to buy something? And they're like, it's yeah, you got us again. It makes it easier to buy something. That doesn't, I, I've never seen like a lamp and been like, I gotta have that. I don't know if, if I'm in the minority or something, but I could imagine if that was out when Drive came out and everyone wanted Ryan Gosling's jacket. Holy. Did you see the guy with the Drive jacket at the parliament? I did not. Uh, but you have correctly surmised that that is something that's relevant to my interests. <laughs> I mean, it's not like that big of a deal. It's just more like, I don't know. Doesn't anybody just Wikipedia what they're eating while they're eating it anymore? I'm in a position of weakness because all of my content is supported both by direct support and also advertisements. <laughs> but <laughs> well, this shit is pissing me off, bro. I do that. It's a great thing to do. I think it's a good... I know it sounds insane, but if you really think about it, it teaches you relevant stuff about your life or stuff that's interesting to you. You eat a sandwich every day. You've never been eating a sandwich and been like, I'm going to Wikipedia what's the history of sandwiches. And yet you've eaten a thousand of them in your life. You, you have no interest whatsoever in scratching the surface of history that led to the sandwich being created. What are you going to look up instead? Fucking video 900 of Hatsune Miku singing some fucking song. It's not even her on stage. She's uh, do mo capping that stuff in a bunker somewhere in Akihabara. It's just an avatar. It's the same thing with the, the Apple Vision Pro. All I, I'm trying not to just be like a reactionary, but it's all like very close to dystopia for me. The people are like, check out how it's going to reinvent your life. You know all that invisible dirt you're vacuuming up? Well, we can make it so you'll see that you've missed spots in your Apple Vision Pro. Hey, you know when you're cooking pasta and you have to remember two separate timers in your head? You don't have to remember them anymore. Look, they're right in front of your eyes. As long as you strap these fucking goggles to your forehead the entire time you're cooking and the steam is blowing into your face. Now, it might be one of those things where it's like, yeah, yeah, these are the early implications or the early applications. But in the future, yeah, yeah, in the future, your ass is going to be like, hang on, I can't cook. I got to charge my fucking Apple Vision Pro. And then when you put it on, it's going to have two timers that you downloaded from the App Store. And then every time you snooze a timer, it's going to pop up a 30 second advertisement that you can't get out because it's in your field of view. And then you're going to talk to your friends, you're going to be having some cyber beers, and you're going to be saying, can you, can you remember what the days were like before we had Apple Vision Pro, brother? They got, that. you see the virtual calls where they got all the people's digital avatars on Apple Vision Pro? I don't even want to talk to you on FaceTime with like my real face and your real face. I don't even want to talk to you voice to voice. I want to send you like a 100 character text message that's like, I'll be there in 15 minutes and then I'll show up in 15 minutes. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm the, the Luddite. But I'm not getting that shit unless Kate gets it. Then I'll try it out once and be like, that's cool and then probably never use it again because I'm a little lazy. But like, I'm sure there will be something eventually in VR where I'm like, oh, that looks like a cool application of it. But it's still like, I don't know. There is a part of me that like every year that goes by, I'm like, if they had it in them, they would have done it by now. <laughs>
This is how we get old people that can't use tech? Yeah, but the, when you're 13, it's easy to be like, you know, oh, you're out of touch, grandpa. When you start to become grandpa, you're like, why did they make the fucking TVs worse? You used to just turn it on and then turn the channels. Now, sometimes I don't even know how to find shit on my own TV because the TV I bought has like a little panel on the home screen that has advertisements on it. And I'm like, I never got this shit. And then someone's like, dad, it's an, it's an advertisement. And I'm like, well, why is my product playing an advertisement to me? It's over-designed. Like, I don't mind coming up to speed with new technology if like the new technology is demonstrably adding some value to my life in exchange for having to learn it. But I'm not gonna learn it just so like some punk kid who can't even dunk a basketball is like, you're out of touch. You know, you're not based just cause you're 17 years old. You're just contemporary. To become based, you have to derive principles within yourself and then live according to those principles. So you gotta give me like a good reason to get an Apple Vision Pro. And like, it will amp up my vacuuming is not a good reason. And I literally, like in my entire life, I don't think I've ever forgotten about like the pasta on the stove. Maybe I've burned a quesadilla from time to time, but that's fucked up. Cause the first side of the quesadilla takes like 80% of the time to cook. And the back side of the quesadilla takes 20%. So sometimes you do the calculation in your head and you're like, I'm gonna give it the same amount of time on both sides. You fucked up cause the pan got hot over the course of the first part. So then, Anyway, you sound like my dad complaining about me getting my first computer. And you sound like some fucking hardline Solana user that's like, you sound like Benjamin Franklin going out with a kite and being like, hey, Benjamin, why are you flying a kite in a lightning storm? Like, you have to prove that the invention actually has merit. You can't just be like, well, they said that about the toilet, too. And now there's one in every house. My lord? Hmm. What is it? A toilet, my lord. A toilet? You expect this court to do its business inside? We're not animals. <laughs> we go outside like humans. Like you got it. You can't just argue from ad hominems, bro. So what is it? Is the pasta timer going to change my life? Or is there another app coming out that's actually going to win me over? People have been using VR goggles for years. I know they're using them. What, what, what does it have for me, though? I know it's like, oh, dude, I'm so sick of video games where you press the X button to swing a sword. Instead, I go like this. Ting. 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 And then, I look, look, dude, you look down and there's a real potion bottle on your belt. And you grab it. You go like that. Like, that's cool. Once or twice. I'm not saying I'll never adopt VR. I'm simply saying it's got to be better than... Vacuum Simulator Pro and you'll never burn your pasta sauce while you're waiting for your noodles to be done. They gotta give me something. Cause I was like, no disrespect. Kate and I used uh, the HTC Vive before literally like 99.9% .9 of the population. We, get, we did a tech demo with game developers in Vancouver who built Fantastic Contraption with like one of the HR Geiger ones where like there's like a seven inch diameter cable that plugged right into your brain stem that had to hang onto the ceiling. And while I was doing it, I this was like 2015 or something like that. I was like, this is gonna change the world. As somebody who didn't understand engineering at all, inherently in my brain, I was like, this makes perfect sense. I can experiment with like taking apart an airplane engine or something like that and then putting it back together and it can give me feedback in real time and you know I can see what things would actually look like instead of having to translate like text to visuals in my head. Maybe there's like industrial applications for that that make sense. But they if they're going to hit the app that causes mass adoption for me it's not going to be FaceTime visible timers on the screen or I'm vacuuming up coins like some kind of fucking lab rat that's like, I just can't focus on vacuuming. Can you just put some kind of Skinner box in it so if I vacuum up enough coins, I can make it look like my vacuum is like a laser vacuum? Like I already fucking figured that shit out, okay? Maybe for people that are younger that haven't had to build that kind of like tenacity, that will help and I'm not even against it, but I'm just saying I already solved that like in the firmware. <laughs> I can clean the bed. They, they already have that. They already have the chore enhancer. It's called Bluetooth earbuds in a podcast, okay? 
They just got to give me something a little bit more exciting. And it's not going to be shooting the bow and arrow. They'll, I'm sure they'll come up with something at some point. And then I'll be like, ah, oh, why didn't they? They need a second one. But they got to get the first one first. I think there's a global market for five computers, maybe. Ryan, you got me all wrong. You, you need to learn how to debate. Again, it's the same. What's, what's the counter argument for the dudes who are all in on Monero? You know, who say like, well, I've, I've got my net worth in bonk coin right now. Hey, that's pretty stupid. You know, they laughed at Thomas Edison, too, when he said he was going to invent the light bulb. That's true. They've also laughed at a bunch of stupid ideas. Like, that does, it's a statement that inherently doesn't mean anything. You have to have it, like, you get, instead of being like, this is how people felt about old technology, how about telling me why it's going to change the world? I'm waiting for the non past it. I would love to get onto it. Nobody knows yet. Okay, well then, as far as I'm concerned, then I'm right for now. <laughs> Maybe it'll change. <laughs> but for now, I feel, I feel like it's right. I didn't say the tech is worthless. I said it's worthless for me. Maybe you suck ass at vacuuming and cooking pasta. And that's not to say, again, that that's all the technology is good for. But you got to tell me one of the things that it's actually good for. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep talking about the pasta timer and the vacuuming. Or the dude who is doing his laundry while watching Spider-Man in his field of view. Is the Peloton not just a gamified bicycle? It's, well, it's not really gamified, the way I use it, for one. And secondly, no one's like, there's going to be a Peloton in everyone's household. Whenever someone's like, I'll just use a real bike, I'm like, fucking go ahead, by all means. But I'm like, I'll just use my eyes. People are like, you would have been the dude taking a steamship across the Atlantic Ocean after they invented the jet. I'm like, I don't know. I can kind of look at a jet and be like, holy shit, that takes a seven-week trip and takes it to like seven hours instead. That's kind of crazy. I can see the utility, but apparently my ass is not a forward thinker because I can remember that the noodles take eight minutes to cook and the sauce is just done when you pour the noodles into it. I just gotta... You, if it was... If it had practical applications, which it might you would be able to tell them to me instead of making personal attacks on my character. That's all I'm saying. You're actually, in my personal opinion, you're strengthening my argument by just insulting me instead of attacking my position. Plus, I am not always anti-technology. You're right. I thought Quibi had a chance. Now, I was wrong. It made sense to me, bro. Vertical videos. Everybody, everybody's watching content on their phones. Vertical videos. We need vertical TV. It's the way to go. I was in a Quibi. I had to track down the producer on LinkedIn and get him to pay me the $100 he owed me. That sounds like it tracks. Did you think Threads had a chance? Um, I don't know. It's still, it's a complicated situation. Because maybe, like, there was a time where I thought that, like... Twitter being asked means that it's the right opportunity for like another Twitter to show up. But I have increasingly come to this position that like Twitter is a, you cannot recreate Twitter. And it's not because it has any special sauce. It's just because it was born in a different world. And you, if you ask people to like buy into a new Twitter, you would be like, no, we know that it's fucking horrible for you now. This is like the difference between, like if you're already addicted to smoking cigarettes and someone was like, you're not addicted anymore. Do you want to try a cigarette? You would be like, absolutely not. It's going to kill me. But at the same time, if you were like, well, why don't you quit now? You're like, well, I've already come this far. <laughs> thoughts on Neuralink? I think you could probably derive my thoughts on Neuralink based on my thoughts on uh, augmented reality. Neuralink scares me more than it inspires me. Here's so I'm not trying to be a doomer. I'm very non-doomer, okay? But I'll just tell you my line of reasoning for this. You can remember, let's say you're 30 years old. Do you remember what life was like 10 years ago? Technology has changed a lot. It's improved a lot in the sense that like the processors got faster um, and you have more access to information. Do you think that that has caused your overall degree of life to improve? Are you happier now? Obviously, there's other things at play. You know, if you were 20, then you probably had less responsibility. If you're 30 now, you probably have more. 
for me, I feel like what actually determines the quality of my life is my habits, my relationships with the people around me, how I treat other people and how other people treat me. And that is like 90%, like a set thermostat of happiness that's at like 60. And then the, the way that I affect the world immediately around me and the way that it impacts me can change it like plus 20 or minus 20. I'm never hitting 100, but I'm never hitting zero. So I just feel like anytime people are like, this new piece of technology is going to change everything. I'm like, it might, but I really feel without becoming a caricature, I feel like it changes a lot and then you get used to it and the people who reap the benefits are at the top. Like Instagram, Uber, the rise of social media, so all, of, all of these things over the last like 10 years that have, have really taken off, they have added like a little bit of like quality of life, but mostly just siphoned off other people's money and pushed it to the people who like invented it or invested it in the first place. Like I really think about like, like DoorDash, like the people who invented DoorDash think that they have done a societal good, which is crazy to me because for like, a couple of years, I kind of like believed it. I was like, they're good. We used to just be able to get pizza and Chinese food delivered. We used to only be able to get pizza and Chinese food. That's crazy. Now we can get sushi delivered. Now we can get falafel delivered. Holy. Then for like a couple of years, I was like, this is amazing. And then we're like five years later. And I'm like, I wish we could. Like nowadays when my wife asked me what we should get for takeout or delivery, I'm like, please say pizza or Chinese. <laughs> so that our, our $25 meal comes to like $31 with a $6 cash tip instead of $72. I don't know. It's, I don't, I'm genuinely not like cynical in the sense that I'm like, this makes the, this is killing the world. I'm more cynical in the sense that I'm like, I just feel like it, you get like a brief dopamine hit where you're like, wow, what an amazing invention. Then your level of contentness in life like acclimates to it in six months. And the only lasting impact is that you feel like you can't go back. This is why you end up with like people on social media are like, why aren't kids happy these days? You know, I would have killed for a smartphone in 1984. And you're like, well, yeah, obviously you would have killed for a smartphone in 1984, but they like they're... Had, they're depressed for like the same reasons that people have been depressed forever. They like have no hope for the future of the world. The economics of it are fucked up, like et cetera, et cetera. The, I've, I guess over time, I've come to believe that the things that would actually make life better for people are not like momentary dopamine hits of like new technology, like, oh, that we made like Netflix too, or like, you know, you can, Amazon can deliver stuff to you in the, in the sky and instead like fixing the housing crisis by constructing like a shitload more houses and stuff like that. And like more regulations that would force corporations to give their employees benefits or maybe even like a pension or something like that. So they don't feel like they have to leave their job once every year in order to get a salary buff because there's no corporate loyalty anymore and stuff like that. But instead, it's like, what are you complaining about, bro? There's TikTok now. And I'm like, well, I don't necessarily think TikTok's part of the problem. But I don't, I, I guess I don't think it's part of the solution. <clears throat> Maybe it'll have more than just uh, pasta timers and HD vacuuming. But like, part of me is like, is this just DoorDash 3? Is this email again? Is this email 2? Me inventing email, this is crazy. I could talk to anybody at any point. Me using email in 2024, oh fuck. <laughs> anybody can contact me at any moment. I did read an article and it was complaining about uh, Gen Z employees entering the white collar workforce. And this is how I know I'm not out of touch. Maybe I'm out of touch with the AR, but I'm still in touch by being cool with the youth of the nation. It was like, it's very frustrating to deal with Gen Z because many of them choose not to log into their work emails when they're off the clock. And I'm like, that's fucking smart, bro. I'm not even stealing valor from millennials who have done that. Cause I understand that you're like, 
I can get ahead a little bit if I sign into my email when I'm at home. The problem is as soon as you cast on the yoke, you can't cast it off, right? Like that's, that's sick that when they leave their office, they're like, I'm just not going to look at anything related to work unless you, you know, pay me to look at it. That's smart. I love it when you suck me like that and when you close it. Give me the shivers, two or three, and baby, we're gonna go till I split your crack. And when you see the body's over, then you throw it right back. I said, ooh, something said that, that, that was like close. He doesn't say that. He says something like that. You make me feel like I'm living a teenage dream. The way you suck me off, I go. And don't ever look, baby, with your ripped up jeans and your skin tight jeans and your teenage jeans tonight. That's a banger, too. But you didn't have to suck me off. Put my underpants down and throat my member But you didn't have to bite it off And spit it out and get me feel so low <laughs> What? Something like it's so- I didn't write the song, dude! It's something like that, okay? Leave those parodies to Justin? I still think about it every time I hear the song, which is like every 80s ride on Peloton. John Cougar Mellencamp's uh, Jack and Diane. Sucking off chili dudes inside the morgue's deep freeze. Jack's wearing a winter coat. He's got a pillow underneath his knees. Let them rock, let them roll. Let the Bible Belt come and save my soul. I think about your pisses on my lips like all the time. Because your piss, your piss is on my lips. Because your piss, your piss, I can't resist. Because your piss is on my lips. When I turn out the lights. <laughs> I have Vanessa Carlton song stuck in my head, except it's sucking a dick downtown. Sucking fast, stations passed, and I'm homebound. <laughs> And I throat you. I don't know why I'm using throat. I guess because you gotta, you need a lot of synonyms for suck in order to make the song feel clever. 